right, folks, I got a bunch of financial news and your phone calls and a ton of news I haven't gotten to coming up in the next hour. We're going to do a brief thing about CPS trying to steal people's kids when the kid's already dying and doesn't want any more chemo, and they say, no, we're taking it and give them chemo until they kill them. Just amazing. And and this goes with them trying to force inoculations on everybody. But I wanted to bring up Rachel Wimbush with Stuckel and Ferguson Law Firm, also doing research, came highly uh, recommended. Uh, it's uh, paulstuckel.com. Uh, dealing uh, with uh, this type of activity. So I wanted to bring her up for a few minutes with what her advice is. We're getting different perspectives. Uh, have you been uh, filled in, uh, Rachel, on this story? I'm sure you've heard it a million times. Yes, and um, we deal with CPS and false allegations, parents being falsely accused of sexual abuse or physical abuse or neglect of their children and um, we we hear these sad stories every day and it, it it's a war against our families but you've got to feel good because you're doing good work I don't know how these well I guess they have the highest turnover of any industry 50 plus percent I've read I mean how do these people do this break people's rights lie and then they're five times more likely to abuse children in CPS than anywhere else, according to Justice Department. Well, what would you advise them to do? Because they're not saying what they're, you know, they, they strip searched her daughter, has a little bruise on her leg they saw with shorts. Uh, they strip searched her to try to find more. There was nothing more. It was a little bruise, the size of a, maybe in between a quarter and a nickel, clearly from a table. You know, we've all had them. She told him that, and they said over and over again, no, your mommy did this. You're going to be in trouble if you don't do it, say. So she said, okay, my mommy did it. But she's on record saying then they took photos, laptop, didn't tell her, and let her go to gymnastics at the end of school, called her and said, come to your house. In my experience, they wanted to come in the house and dig up some dirt or say it was neglect or there was dishes or something. I mean, what would you do about this? I mean, they won't say what they want. She drove by her place where she was going to meet them. There was the cop car with the CPS. What does this sound like? Um, it it sounds like they already have it in their head, which all of all of them do. The law enforcement and CPS, um, they always believe the child. And if the child doesn't tell them what they want to hear, then they they will threaten and intimidate the child. They see it as the children are victims of abuse, and they're set out to prove it, regardless of any type of evidence or indicia to the contrary. Um, now, let's be they, clear, though. They, Most police aren't involved. Don't they, from what I've seen, you're the expert, have little special pet police that are part of the psychosis, kind of like the Nazis, that will go out and violate people? They do, and actually, um, a lot of the advocacy centers where the CPS workers um, and the forensic interviewers are housed, there are detectives specially assigned to these child abuse cases, and so they, they work hand-in-hand hand with each other. So they choose to be there because they like children so much. <clears throat> okay, uh, so where should they go from here, in your opinion? Well, um, with with the instance that you're talking about right now, um, it sounds to me like the family needs to have um, very strong and vigorous defense against CPS because the child needs to be protected against the foster system. There's horrendous things that happen to these children when they're removed from a family and placed into oftentimes dangerous environments um, that are funded by the state. And the, the parents need to have legal representation to, to protect themselves against any criminal um, charges that may come forward and also so they don't lose their family. And, then the, and, of course, the system has an incentive to defend these horrible warrants where they keep children, where they routinely die. We're back in 70 seconds. Stay there. I want to do five more minutes with you to get more advice. I mean, CPS wants to meet. They want to come to the house. Should they go back and stay at their house, say no, bring a warrant or bring a protective order? Should they wait? Uh, should they, I mean, you know, what should they do? Your perspective on this as an expert who's, you know, been involved in hundreds of these cases, attorney at law, Rachel Wimbush with us uh, as they try to kidnap young Haley out of our office. We'll be right back. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Many human illnesses can be attributed to the fact that soil in the United States no longer provides plants with the mineral elements which are essential to human nourishment. Many studies have shown that the majority of Americans are deficient in minerals. Deficiency in any one of the more important minerals actually results in disease. 
Go to raworganicveganSuperfoods.com today and see the wide range of foods available that are designed to help your mind and body work the way they were intended to. You can also visit the link on prisonplanet.com to see some of the amazing products available. Folks, you've got to try this. These foods promote nutritional excellence, health and well-being, beauty enhancement, and truly sustainable agriculture. Many foods today have herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, and insecticides that were not intended for human consumption. Go to raworganicveganSuperfoods.com today and see some of the amazing products available. You are what you eat, so eat what your body needs. Remember to go to raworganicveganSuperfoods.com today. Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Coming up in the next segment, I'm going to give you the phone numbers to these wicked creatures. There are child kidnappers everywhere. Claim they have immunity. Operating. Hitler, and I always hate to go back to Hitler, but Hitler operated under the same eugenics program that set up the family courts. He got it from the U.S. and England. And the first people they killed, the first people they put in death camps, the first people that they shut down uh, the first, were, were, were families. They say, oh, you're not fit to have your child. Oh, we're going to euthanize your child. Or, you know, you get a letter back, oh, your child died in CPS custody. And then they put more than two-thirds of the kids on psychotropics. A lot of them die from the drugs they put them on. And then they go before the state in Texas and say they have bad gene pools. We have that on video in Endgame. Going back uh, to Rachel Wimbush. Rachel, what do you think they should do then, you know, hearing this, I mean, do they go, and I know you're not taking the case, you're just what you would do, you know, if, if, if you had this case, would you go back home, would you wait, would you stay away, uh, you know, would you have a lawyer contact the CPS and say, what is this about, you know, how far have you gone, they wouldn't talk to me, they said, we'll talk to her or her lawyer, but when she then talks to them, they won't talk to her, they just say, come meet us, come meet us. They don't need to do anything right now, um, they've already experienced how CPS works and where CPS is going with this. And if, if they don't have basis to remove the children, um, and, and there's not an emergency right now, um, CPS can't do anything. And so they do not need to cooperate. They need to have an independent defense, um, attorney represent them and have independent evaluations of everything that's going on and not cooperate with CPS because CPS ha already has it in their mind what they're doing and what they're going after. And if they show up as, at their house, if they don't have a warrant, they don't have to let them in. They don't have to talk with them. And it's, it's advisable that they don't because um, CPS and the, the Advocacy Center, everybody that, that works um, in this whole industry and they lie uh, incessantly yes and and they're, they're all on each other's food chain and um you know their careers are based on what about on school what if they grab her at school unfortunately um you know they they come in and speak with children all the time at school without notifying the parents as they're required to do um, within a certain period of time after speaking with the children um but the the girls should just not to say anything and say, I, I want you to call my parents. I want to you to speak with my attorney. Absolutely. There's, um, because right now, the way that CPS is headed, and we see this all the time in all of our other cases as well, um, they've already got it in their head where they're going, and just trying to cooperate with them is only going to make things worse. And until um, the, the family stands up, and and fight and and make CPS work and prove their case. There there's absolutely nothing uh, that will stop these people. And so they need a defense attorney to to defend them against CPS and and this barrage. Well, um, you're you're up in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Yes, we um, at Stuckel and Ferguson, we represent families all across the state of Texas in CPS cases as well as um, criminal cases that arise out of false allegations of child abuse or false allegations of child sexual abuse. Because have you heard of Butch? Have you heard of Attorney Butch Brought out of Houston? No, I have not. Yeah, he got recommended.